Thanks for joining me in our video series describing the different functionalities of our THG automation welding system. Today we're going to talk about uh, welding in a weld start and a weld end. Um, we're going to keep this very simple uh, and then we'll add some more uh, videos later talking about the more advanced functionality. So in this case we had talked about in a previous video linear and joint moves so we're not going to cover those today. Um, we're just going to get into the welding piece, but go back to other videos later, and you can see some of these um, other instructional videos for other functionality, including uh, the moves to the welds and away from the welds. So let's start with creating a new program. So we're going to press the button in the middle, and we're going to say program, new program, and discard the changes because we don't really we care, care about uh, saving those changes from a previous video. So we've got our weld torch here, and we've got our part here. Let's say we want to weld from where my left hand is here to where my right hand is. So this is aluminum plate. It's easier to see. Um, we have aluminum wire in. Maybe some, uh, in a future video, we'll weld some aluminum. Uh, in fact, we'll probably weld some aluminum, stainless, carbon steel, maybe some other metals. So in this case, we've got maybe our robot uh, in some type of you know, park position over here. All right, so let's start with that. And we're gonna create a joint move that gets us over, let's say right here um, on the other side of the clamp. So we're gonna go from here to here and then over to our weld. So let's create a move. We're gonna go down box, joint move. And we're gonna move the robot over here. And we're gonna press create waypoint and then we're gonna press okay. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to put us back where we would consider a home position or a out of the way position when this part's done. So we're gonna go back to this position here and we're just gonna create another move, leave it linear with that down box there and we're gonna create waypoint and okay. All right, so let's go back to our joint move and we're gonna go move to waypoint and hold the button until we get there. Now, we're gonna start welding. To do so, about halfway down in our THG automation weld nodes, you'll see a weld start. So we're gonna press that. If you notice the screen now shows a demonstration of a robot torch, welding torch with an inside corner weld and a red dot, meaning we have not programmed that position yet or we haven't created a waypoint. So at the end of this list of nodes, you got your start, you got your midpoint, and you got your end. We're not going to use a midpoint today. So we're just going to take that, and we're going to hit delete and remove that. So now we have a start, and we have an end to create our weld. Let's go to the start again, and let's move the robot down to our position. Now we're going to briefly turn in the UR Plus uh, toolbar, we're going to turn on Teach Mode. You see that little blue dot, blue square pop up. Now, when we come in and bump the part, we're not gonna burn our wire off. Let's try a longer piece of wire. You notice our wire, you hear that little clicking sound? Our wire is actually backing up so that we don't bend our wire off. So it's a really great function and we have built that into our UR cap. So in this case, so we can get rid of the noise, we'll just shut this back off and I'll stop clicking. So let's say we want to start our weld here. We'll back our wire up a little bit just for demonstration purposes so we can just do a linear weld. So we'll hit create waypoint and then press OK. Now we have other things we have to deal with when we're talking about welding. And today we're just going to briefly talk about setting up a travel speed and setting up our job. We also have what we call our, our travel speed to the position and we have an approach position. So let's just start with the waypoint for the start and then the waypoint for the end. Now if you look back in the start here, you notice there's now two green dots. One's for an approach and one's for start, meaning we've created now waypoint for that a weld start. Let's go to the weld end and let's move the robot down a little ways. And we're gonna create a waypoint and press okay. So we've got our basic points between the start and the end. Now let's go to more 
some of the other uh, functionality in our start position. So in the start position, we have a set approach distance. We have our set job number and we have the approach speed. So let's say we want our approach speed to be faster, let's say 500 millimeters per second. Let's change that. So now it's gonna go into the weld at 500 millimeters per second versus the 150 it was set at. Then we're gonna to go to our, back to our approach distance. If you see, we've got a place we can put in a distance. We can go to zero for zero approach distance, or we can go to probably 100, but let's go 50 for now. So what that does is, if we're welding and we don't want to worry about adding more air moves, and we talked about uh, air moves in a previous video, we're going to come from this position up here. And in most cases, people think, well, I need to move the robot over close to the weld before I start the weld. Not true in this case. In our start, since we set a approach distance, of 10 millimeters, we're going to go back over into the movement locations button and over here, and you'll see it where it says on the, the far right, it says move to approach point, and then we have a move to waypoint. Now let's move to that waypoint. Now, notice we've got a distance between the torch and the part. That distance is actually from the TCP or the tool center point of the wire or the torch to the weld of 50 millimeters. If we wanted to change that distance to, let's say 10, which was where it was before. Now we go back to movement locations and move to waypoint. And now the robot has closed its distance to 10. So if we were to make this move now, it would move from the joint position, which was over here someplace, to this position at 10 millimeters from where the weld's actually gonna start. So that alleviates you from having to actually put air moves in right before and after the weld is done. And that's the, the case here. If we go back to movement parameters, you'll see that the retract position for our end is actually at 50. So let's go to that position. So now where our end point was going to be, we actually have a 50 millimeter uh, distance in alignment with the torch. So this is always in alignment with the orientation of the torch. If the torch was, if let's say the weld was up here in this position, then the torch would move in that direction. If it's laid back down, the torch is always going to move in this direction. So it's a really great feature for, let's say, if you're doing multiple welds in a strip, uh, you don't want to put air moves in between every one of them. This is a great way of achieving that by just putting in, in your movement parameters, your distance that you want that uh, retract position to be in. So we're going to just change that back to 10. So let's do this. Let's, let's add a, a move at the end. So we're going to go back to our movement locations and on the left side of the screen where it says weld in position, we're gonna pr press move to waypoint. We're gonna move our robot to where the end of that weld was gonna be. And then we're gonna go to the weld start node and then we're gonna add another move, which will just be a linear move. And let's say we wanna move it to some place out here some, somewhere, just out of the way. Um, it's gonna go someplace else to weld another weld or this is just something functionality wise. So let's press create waypoint and okay, and we're done. So let's pr plus, let's play this program, but first we're gonna go up here to our toolbar. You notice there is a button called weld simulation on. So what that does is it allows us to turn simulation on so that the, the, the welding power source will not actually try to weld but it tells the robot it is welding. So we can run through our weld programs without actually welding. And if we turn that off, it obviously it'll weld then. So uh, let's press play and see what happens. Notice it came in and then it approached at the approach position and then it started doing the weld process.
And there we have it. That's our weld program, kind of the simple intro introductory uh, lesson on that. Um, we'll do more videos here coming up and we'll discuss the more advanced functionality of uh, welds, uh, weld midpoints, circular welds, and so on. Thank you very much and uh, come back soon.